Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is Google Cloud VMware Engine 105 Storage and Network Options. So in a previous video, I talked about the hardware uh, present in each of the nodes in Google Cloud VMware Engine um, and how if you had an equivalent uh, the other side, um, you, those storage policies, network policy, security policies would, would flow across. across. Uh, but just to say that the default um, in there, it would be a vSAN data store. And if possible, um, at both ends, NSXT, uh, certainly for networking and security. Um, but there are more options than just vSAN. So although vSAN is the default storage option for this uh, HCI or hyperconverged infrastructure, uh, we talked about in the other video, we've basically got 19.2 terabytes raw capacity for the data and 3.2 terabytes uh, used as a caching tier for cache writes. Um, so that's what you start with in each node. So three nodes, each with 19.2 terabytes. Um, you just simply add up the uh, capacity. Obviously, this is raw capacity before we do anything like uh, mirroring, RAID or erasure coding, but also before things like deduplication and compression. So um, that's what we start with. Um, Hyperconverged infrastructure vSAN capacity. The other things that we can add to that capacity would be something like Elastifile cloud files, which can deliver NFS services and can be used um, as a primary or secondary storage type. Um, we've also got NetApp cloud volumes, which can deliver um, storage over NFS or SMB. Uh, and again, recommend that you can use that for primary or secondary. Uh, there are also some GCP options, so Google Cloud Storage, which is uh, by default object storage. Again, recommended that you only use that as secondary, but you do have some options there. So you've got the super fast hard converters at the top. You've got Elastifile and NetApp, which can be primary or secondary, and Google Cloud Storage, which they themselves recommend is only used for secondary storage. So they're the storage options. From a networking point of view, obviously um, just an internet connection is fine for getting to this stuff and managing this stuff. You've got options for you know, kind of making things public facing uh, and doing network and security, but you might also want to look at things like a, a direct interconnect. Um, so uh, just like Azure has got Express Route um, and other cloud vendors have got different ways of connecting directly in. Um, we could use a direct in interconnect. So we can we can use one of these direct interconnects to go from an on-premise directly into a Google Cloud VMware engine region. We could also use a direct interconnect to go from a Google Cloud VPC or virtual private cloud into a, a Google Cloud VMware engine region. And then we can also do Cloud VPN. So if you want to do a, a peer network, uh, into another VPC over IPsec VPN. Again, Cloud VPN is another option. Um, the two recommended are the two at the top, the, the two different types of direct interconnect, but Cloud VPN does work and is supported. I guess the only other thing to mention on networking is that we talked in a previous video about the fact that um, included in the cost of Google Cloud VMware Engine is a full license for VMware HCX, but we, in the previous video we didn't discuss what HCX can do. So v, uh, VMware HCX can do things like live vMotion, so a hot migration or a live migration of a virtual machine from on-premise to cloud. Um, we can do cross-center vMotion because this is across two different vCenters. It's important that when we do that vMotion, we can do it between vCenters. Uh, so that's what we call cross vCenter vMotion. We can also do things called bulk migrations and a few different options here, but essentially the um, you know the, the more machines you do or the, the, the bulkier the migration is, you get into a point where you can't do all of that live, so you have to do it cold. Um, so it might be that if you're moving you know, tens of machines or hundreds of machines, um, we have to do them cold and we pick a migration window to do that. Um, however, if it's mission critical, you can do live vMotions, but at this current point in time, it's only one um, one at once, whereas bulk migrations allow you to do tens or hundreds at once, but the downside is they need to be cold. Um, HCX also does things like layer 2 connectivity, so it can make the same range of IP addresses and subnets available um, on both sides 
of, of this environment. So you can use the same set of IP addresses and subnets on-prem and in the cloud. So we're stretching the layer two network or the subnet across both data centers, but we're doing it in a sensible way, a way that wouldn't upset your network people um, who tend not to like layer two stretching because it does things like it increases the size of the broadcast domain or breaks things. This is a, a, a sensible, rational way of doing layer two connectivity. And what it means to most people is you don't have to change the IP addresses or, or subnets of things just because you've moved them from one data center to another. Um, the other thing you can also do, which is often overlooked, is you can also do storage vMotion. So if you're going to move something permanently from one data center to another, um, we're going to do a storage migration as part of that. And that's another thing that VMware HCX can help with. Um, so that's the end of that video. Um, and just to say that um, we're going to use vSAN data stores by default because we're using uh, vSAN as hyperconverged infrastructure. You can add additional primary storage using Elastifile and NetApp. You can add additional secondary storage using Elastifile, NetApp and Google Cloud Storage. And it also includes VMware HCX for Layer 2 networking and vMotion and bulk migrations, including cross vCenter vMotion. So um, that's the end of video 105, um, GCVE storage and network options. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.